Hey everyone, it's Dr. Charlotte Hodges, and today I wanted to talk COVID-19. Um, and as a little side note, I'm very proud of myself. I am finally in this millennium and I'm using a selfie stick. So now my little arm won't be so tired whenever I'm doing all these videos for you guys. So um, I think that this information is gonna be very timely. I want you guys to know that all the data that I'm going to speak about today has been taken directly from the CDC. You can always go to cdc.gov and there is a wealth of information on the very front page of the CDC website. It has COVID splashed all over it. And then there's about 10,000 different links that you can go to um, to answer any and all of these questions. Um, almost on a daily basis, I'm getting updates from my county and state um, medical society. But for these purposes, I specifically wanted to get all the information specifically from the CDC. And I encourage you that if you have questions, refer to the CDC. Even me as a physician, until I really started going through all these different guidelines, I didn't really know um, what was most appropriate in different um, settings. Um, just because we have an MD after our name does not mean that we always are knowing everything that's going on, unfortunately, unless we take a very active role into trying to find um, how we need to proceed. So um, please also have patience with your physicians because like I said, the guidelines are changing sometimes on a daily basis. So I think the very first thing I want to discuss is testing. Um, what types of tests are out there and how accurate are they? Um, I think when it comes down to accuracy, I do want you guys to know that um, you sh should feel confident in the accuracy of the testing, uh, whether it's a nasal swab, um, whether it's in your throat, or whether um, it's blood, that's also called serologic testing. There's not gonna be one medical test out there for any disease that is 100% fail proof. There's always going to be a risk for false positive and for false negative. Um, however, for COVID testing, if you're going to a reputable uh, facility, um, they have had special guidelines and they have special equipment, special swabs that are FDA approved to help ensure the accuracy of the testing. So there are two basic types of testing that's out there. There is testing for the virus, and then there is actually testing for the antibody. Now, the virus is the active particle that is causing all the badness. The antibody is the little particles in your body that you have made um, that help to fight infection. And if you have not been exposed to an infection, and this is of any type, you will not have developed an antibody. And um, like any good thing, it takes time. And so whenever you get infected with any type of infection, um, your body has to see the foreign invader, mount a response, and throughout the course of uh, fighting that um, infection, your body will also then make antibodies to help prevent uh, future infections. That's your um, basic 101 on what an antibody is. Now, if you are going to be tested to see if you have an active infection, it is recommended that you get the nasal pharyngeal swab. That's whenever they stick the thing up your nose, kind of like they're touching your brain. Hold it there for 10 seconds. Or if they do the mouth swab. That is trying to test for active viral particles. That is trying to see, are you currently shedding virus? Do you have an active infection? Regardless of if you have symptoms or not. The other type of testing is actual blood testing. And that's when you're testing for an antibody, the presence of an antibody. An antibody is going to show up after you've had an infection. And serologic testing or blood testing for antibodies is not appropriate testing if you're trying to see, do I have an active infection? If you have antibodies, you may have a current active infection or you, because your body's like in the midst of um, fighting off the enemy or it may have had a past infection 
and your body now has the um, troops at the ready, so to speak. So I hope that that kind of clears up a little bit of some of that confusion about what is the difference between the nasal swabs? What is the difference between the mouth swabs? Um, do I need to get blood tested? What is the best thing for me to do? Ooh, y'all have to forgive me. I'm gonna cross the street, walking on all these beautiful green lawns. Um, so typically, if you have, um, if you are concerned about um, your, whether or not you have COVID-19, you should be getting a nasal swab or a uh, mouth swab um, to test for active viral particles. So that's number one, how good is accuracy? Number two, what type of test? And I think number three also is um, who needs to be tested? You know, early on, whenever the pandemic um, was raging, we did not have a lot of supplies. We did not have a lot of testing. And so the guidelines for who needed to be tested were much, much more stringent. I'm here in Dallas, Texas. They have a number of different facilities and some of the guidelines for who needs to be tested and who doesn't, those have actually shrunk. But for the most part, if you are symptomatic, and what do we mean by symptoms? I mean, do you have a high fever? And you guys, a fever is not 99 even though you say you have a body temperature of 97. Oh my gosh, if I had a quarter for every time a patient told me that, I would have retired many moons ago. A fever is 101.5, point blank period. Not 98.9, not 99, 101.5. That is when you have a fever. So if you have a persistent fever, cough, sometimes people will have um, a, um, a rash, some people will have changes in their tastes. Um, some people um, can have shortness of breath as well. If you're not sure if you've been exposed but you're experiencing these symptoms, um, then it is appropriate for you to go get tested, especially if you're a healthcare professional. Um, in my practice also, if somebody has had a known exposure um, but they are asymptomatic, you need to A, self-quarantine for 70, at least 72 hours. And then we also um, test for COVID-19. Um, if you're asymptomatic, um, you can generally return to work after, and you're a healthcare professional after you've had um, two negative COVID tests. And these would be the nasal swab, the viral tests, but not within um, a 24 hour period. It's not a good thing for you to try to get tested like every 12 hours. It's not gonna be accurate. I think the other thing is the timing of the testing. Let's say you went to a picnic and everybody was trying to do the right thing. However, you found out that little Johnny's friend, ooh, and it's gonna be a little noisy. Little Johnny's friend actually tested positive for COVID and he was at the picnic. That was on Saturday. You get a call from mom on Sunday telling you his COVID status. Do you need to go and run out and go get tested? Immediately, no, but you do need to be self-quarantining. You need to be self-monitoring. The reason why I say you do not need to immediately go get tested is having an infection is sort of like getting pregnant. If you have unprotected sex and then the next night um, or in the next day, you're like, oh my goodness, what just happened? You wouldn't immediately have a pregnancy test. You know that you have to wait a week or two or maybe until you've had a missed period before you would go out and get your pregnancy test. The same is with a viral illness. Um, you, the viral illness has about a two to 14 day incubation period. So if you were to go get tested immediately after your exposure, even if you did contract the virus, it's not gonna show up. So what are things that you can do? What are the best things for you to do to um, keep from getting COVID-19? And it's really the simplest things. You need to wear a mask. Wearing a mask is protecting you and the others. It's a very kind thing to do. If you're using a cloth mask, what you're doing is you're preventing yourself, should you have COVID-19, 
from spreading it to others. Unless you're wearing an N95 mask, particles um, will be able to come into you because it's just the way it's filtered. Um, so wear a mask. Number two, wash your hands frequently. If you don't have access to soap and water, then you can use um, an alcohol sanitizer that they recommend is 60% alcohol. Um, and also, I mean, if your hands are like dirty, like my little girls are usually on the weekend, um, you need to hit those things with some soap and water. And also do social distancing at least six feet apart. Um, I've had a number of questions about, um, can you take certain supplements? Vitamin D, zinc, vitamin C, Currently, there is no data out, no conclusive uh, evidence that taking any of these um, supplements or copper um, can help um, decrease your risk for contracting the illness. What we do know is there are some certain diseases, obesity being one of them, that greatly increases your risk for contracting the disease, and that would be obesity. Um, heart disease and diabetes. Diabetes is actually a really big one. I was surprised whenever I found out the most current data that um, you can have it at two and a half to three and a half times more likely um, risk of dying, not just being hospitalized, but a risk of dying whenever you're diabetic should you contract the disease. So be a good citizen, wear your mask, you're doing everything you can protect um, the people around you. Um, let me see, what else? So we talked about your tests. We talked about, are they accurate? We talked about a little bit about who should get testing. And of course, if you have any questions, there are some specific guidelines. So I encourage you go to the CDC website because they'll have all these different decision trees, especially if you're a healthcare professional. Um, and then finally, what can you do to mitigate the risk of getting the infection? Um, and who is at risk most you know um i think a lot of this is just going to be common sense you just have to use common sense measures and we need to do what's best for us and your families and also for the people around us so i hope that this information has been helpful for you guys um please please share it with your friends go to cdc website for more information Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Bye. And stay safe and healthy and wear your mask. Even though I'm out for a walk, there's nobody around me. So have a good one.